talk about Bruno, no, no, no. We don't talk about Bruno, huh? Well, too bad, because I am going to talk about Bruno. <laughs> oh, yeah, you heard that one right. I'm going to talk all about Bruno, and there's nothing you can do to stop me from talking about Bruno. It's a cool dude. Yeah, overall, he's a nice fella. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Film Theory, talking about Disney's Encanto. Because this thing, it's just great. Every song is a banger. The animation is beautiful, and Stephanie Beatriz, I mean, what more can I say other than 99? I legitimately loved this movie. After getting sort of missed in theaters back when things were slow with reopening, this one has blown up over recent weeks on Disney Plus streaming. And it's easy to see why. It's fun, it's clever, it's heartfelt, and most of all, it's different from pretty much every other animated movie that's been put out in recent years. But maybe the most different thing of all is that this is a movie filled with unsolved mysteries. Not in the sense of like, hey, they forgot something, or, well, that's clearly a teaser for Encanto 2, Encanto Mas Duro, but more like the film's just saying, hey, the characters finish their emotional and spiritual journey, but some of the unexplained things of this universe, yeah, we're just gonna let them stay unexplained. Come to your own conclusions. And a quick search over any discussion of Encanto on the internet clearly shows people are definitely trying to do just that. So, how can we not get in on that action ourselves by diving into the biggest question that remains at the end of this movie. Does Mirabelle finally get to move out of the nursery? Seriously, just because she didn't get a magic door doesn't mean a grown woman should be forced to sleep on a janky nursery cot. Meanwhile, you got this kid over here going, hey look, I'm Tarzan. It's my literal jungle room. Watch me cuddle with a capybara. The Madrigals have some severe issues with the haves and have-nots in this movie. But all of this is just a byproduct of the real questions that are being asked here. What is Mirabelle's gift? Does she get a gift? Like, ever. I mean, sure, the whole premise of the movie is that she doesn't get one, but was that really true, or is her gift something lame like, the gift was the friends we made along the way? Well, I think I have the definitive answer. I know for sure what Mirabelle's gift is, when she gets it, and what it means for the rest of the family. But in order to get there, we have to cover some deeply hidden Easter eggs, as well as a few other theories about how the magic of this world actually works. So listen up, Dolores. This one is for you. All right, since the setup here actually does have a lot lot of moving parts that play into today's theory, it's probably best to recap things for quick reference. Encanto takes place in Colombia near the beginning of the 20th century, sometime after the Thousand Days War, a civil war between two rival political factions. The Encanto of the title refers to the charmed place between two mountains where a community of refugees and their descendants live under the protection of the magical Madrigals, a family blessed by a miracle that gives each of them a superpower when they come of age. Peppa can control the weather with her feelings, Julieta's cooking can heal, Luisa has super strength, strength, Isabella has phytokinesis, which is the power to control plants, Camilo is a shapeshifter, Antonio can talk to animals, Dolores has super hearing, and Bruno talk about Bruno can see into the future. The miracle also made their house casita come to life. The miracle appears to be contained inside of a magic candle protected by the head of the family, Abuela Alma, who led the community to the area after her husband Pedro died while on the run from enemy soldiers. But, in the least subtle Disney metaphor since Elsa was birthed out of the Yannick ice luge of mommy issues in Frozen 2, there are literal and figurative cracks forming, and it all leads back to our main character, Mirabelle, the only Madrigal who, on the appointed day, was not bestowed with a gift or special magic room by the miracle candle, and no one quite understands why. So with the rest of the family's magic fading, Mirabelle sets off to solve the mystery by visiting each member one by one in a structure that feels like it was ripped straight out of a Mega Man game. One therapeutic musical boss fight at a time, she learns that the pressure everyone is under is what's causing tension within the family. One by one, they all heal and come to a new understanding of each other, except for Abuela Alma, who won't hear any of it. A few musical numbers and one heartfelt confession later, the community comes together to rebuild Casita, and the Encanto is renewed in a new, more open, and more powerful form. Bien esta lo que bien acaba. Well, except for the fact that the candle went out and stayed out. And we never truly found out what made everything work in this universe. We also never get confirmation about whether or not Mirabelle in the newly rebuilt casita gets a magic power or magic room. And working those questions out is what's driving a lot of the post-movie discourse. So, are the answers actually here in the film? Or is this just a case where it's like, you gotta make up your own personal headcanon. Well, I think I have a 
all the answers, so you have to look really closely at the clues that are sprinkled throughout the movie. First and foremost, let's debunk a theory that I've seen tossed around on the internet. It's actually one that a member of our team first pitched out to me. The magic of the house, and even the miracle of the candle, are all thanks to the spirit of the late Abuelo Pedro, the grandfather who's still watching and protecting the family even after his tragic death. Gotta admit, on my first watch of the movie, I was waiting for this to become the big twist. An emotional reunion of loved ones that brings the family together and revives the magic of the house. And then it just didn't come. I was surprised, but in retrospect, it also kind of makes sense. For one thing, while Casita does seem to have a mind of its own, as if it were inhabited by a friendly spirit, the structure's very name being referred to in the Spanish language feminine form Casita seems to indicate that the Madrigals don't regard the presence itself as that of a man. And while it's also a very plausible theory that Pedro's spirit might have resided inside the candle, this ultimately gets debunked when magic returns to the house at the end of the movie, but the candle does not return with it. This suggests that the magic of the house is coming from somewhere or something other than the candle. But where? Well, let's look at the doors. They are unquestionably the most important magical symbol within the movie. Mirabelle obviously doesn't get one, setting her apart from everyone else. But there's another key difference here that everyone seems to overlook. Here are all the doors. Notice anything interesting? Anything unusual? Antonio's is different. When every other family member visited Abuela Alma and the magic candle to receive their doors, the image on it featured their adult selves. But Antonio's door is the first one to depict him as an actual child. It's an interesting detail. It's also worth pointing out that this happens after he requests Mirabelle to be the one at his side during the ritual. Could those two events possibly be connected? Well, the timeline definitely seems to support that sort of conclusion. Abuela Alma ushers in all the adult doors up until Mirabelle. Mirabelle, as a child, gets nothing. And then, in the immediate next ceremony for Antonio, he gets a new type of door. A kid door while under the guidance of Mirabelle. Basically, it seems what we're seeing here is a handover from Abuela Alma as the keeper of the Encanto to Mirabelle, who's now in charge of keeping that miracle alive for the next generations. That is why Antonio's door is different. It also explains Mirabelle's gift. She and Abuela Alma have the same gift. They're both the keepers of the magic. A magic that comes not from a deceased relative, but rather from a devotion to family and a devotion to service. We were given a miracle because of you. We learn in the movie's conclusion that Abuela Alma first manifested the miracle as a defensive reaction to trauma and extreme grief. She needed to protect herself, her three infant children, and her community from violent soldiers. And as a result, she gave birth to a literal fortress. She gave rise to a family of powerful protectors, and she pushes them hard to serve the community. I was given a miracle, and I was so afraid to lose it that I lost sight of who our miracle was for. As someone who is always most concerned with expectations of the future and what her family could achieve and become, the doors showed adult ideals that the family had to aspire to. But the door that Mirabelle conjures for Antonio depicts her main concern, that Antonio is happy and confident with himself now. Ask yourself this, what is Abuela Alma's power? None that we know of, she's just the leader, the one that holds the family together, the one in charge of protecting the candle. Even Abuela's magic room reflects reflects this devotion to the family. We don't see much of it, but small details like the top of the window frame and the tiles on the ground in her bedroom match the room that she shared with Abuelo Pedro. It's a copy of the home that she shared with him. Here we have this house that's able to make magical jungles and giant gardens, but Abuela's room is a symbol of family. So what is Mirabelle? Well, she's the same thing. She's the family's cheerleader, the one who uplifts everyone around her. She is the focal point that is grounded in family. For proof of this, just look at her character design. Each of the powered Madrigals have a symbol for their respective gifts incorporated into their clothing like some sort of superhero logo. A stylized hourglass for the future seeing Bruno, the chameleon for the shapeshifter Camilo, an assortment of animals on Antonio's vest, sound waves around Dolores's collar, barbells on the hem of Luisa's dress, Isabella's flower embroidery, a mortar on Julieta's apron, even Abuela Alma's house dress has a stylized representation of the mountains that protect Encanto's valley. Now look at Mirabelle's dress. She has elements of all of them. Antonio's animals, Luisa's weights, Isabella's flowers, a basket of rolls for Julieta, a rain clown for Peppa, music notes for Dolores, Camilo's chameleon. She brings all of them together. She's the one that, quite literally, holds the household together, just like Alma has done up to this point. But there's one other design detail here that the animators included to communicate this, the motif of butterflies. Butterflies are everywhere on Mirabelle's dress, which directly connects her to the design on the magic candle. 
Noodle. But what you might not have noticed is that it also connects her back to the Casita and Abuela Alma. We see that the back wall of the kitchen, the heart of the Casita, has the repeated theme of butterflies. And on Abuela Alma's dress, just below the mountains, is a lining decorated with butterflies. This is probably why both Mirabel and Abuela Alma are the only two that we see actively talking to and controlling Casita. Well, I'm sure anyone in the family can possibly do it, these are the only two that the movie actively shows us affecting the actions of the house, further supporting the connection between the two women. These women are one and the same. Mirabelle has no power because, well, now her power is protecting the magic. She has risen to take over the family miracle moving forward. The movie outright tells us this, except, uh, you know, none of us notice because it tells us this in Spanish. During the climax, when Abuela confesses the story of finding the miracle, a Spanish ballad plays in the background, Dos Orguitas, or Two Caterpillars. Hmm, caterpillars, as in the creature that ultimately metamorphoses into butterflies? Could this possibly relate to the two women in the movie who symbolically transform into butterflies and wear them all over their clothes? Well, the lyrics go a little something like this. I, little caterpillars, don't hold on anymore. You must grow apart and return. You'll keep moving forwards. Two women who grow apart only to grow back together and move forward, huh? Sounds a lot like the relationship between Mirabelle and Alma and how their emotional separation ultimately moves the family forward into a new era of empathy and emotional understanding. Quote again from the translated lyrics. You must leave and build your own future. Two disoriented caterpillars in two well-wrapped cocoons. With new dreams, now all that's missing is to do what's necessary in a world that keeps changing. Taking down its walls, there comes our miracle. I mean, it's all right there, guys. Like a strategy guide for solving the family's problems. The world has changed, so take down the walls and rebuild. Come out of your protective cocoons and embrace each other. Mirabelle's gift, just like Alma's, is to feel what others need and, in the case of her family, see their potential and help them realize it. But Alma ultimately lost her way. She pushed the family too hard. She held on to them too rigidly because she was still trapped in the past, a time that she needed to be on the defensive. But as the song said, times had changed. They needed to rebuild in order to move forward. And so, it seemed time for the miracle to be passed on to... The person whose name is literally one letter off from the word miracle. Because let's face it, friends, sometimes the clues don't have to be all that subtle.